All right, let's dive into the world of electronics manufacturing. Today, we're taking a close look at the S7020 series insertion machine. You know, the one that places those tiny components onto circuit boards. We've got the product brochure right here, ready to break it all down. It's fascinating how this machine might shift the entire landscape, not just from a technical, but an economic standpoint as well. Yeah, that's what I thought too. This brochure is making some bold claims, saving money, boosting efficiency, even changing how we think about labor. Okay, so what jumped out at you first? Honestly, the price. They're saying this machine, it's only one third the cost of a typical universal insertion machine. One third, that's a massive difference. For a company trying to keep up mm -hmm. in this competitive world of electronics, that could be a total game changer. Exactly, imagine it, faster production, reduced labor costs, and a quicker return on your investment. It could make a huge impact. Well, hold on, lower cost doesn't always mean better, right? Is this thing user-friendly? Or are we talking about needing a whole team of engineers just to turn it on? Well, the brochure stresses how easy it is to use, they're saying, with just one day of training. Anyone can master it. One day. Seriously, what? that's pretty amazing. It seems like a lot of tech these days is trying to be more accessible. You're right, and I think that's key. We're moving away from those super complicated systems, you know, the ones that need specialists even to touch them. The S7220 seems designed with ease of use in mind, which is a huge advantage in a busy manufacturing setting. And speaking of making things easy, this isn't just one machine, right? It's a whole series. That's right. The brochure lists several models, the S7020T for terminals, the S7020E for eyelets, the S7020P for pins, the S7020S for tack switches, and even the S7020F for handling those odd-shaped components. So it's like a Swiss Army knife for electronics assembly. Pretty clever design. Exactly. It's what they call a unified structure. You just switch out the feeders and grippers, depending on the task at hand. Talk about adaptability. Okay, here's where things get really interesting. The brochure claims that one S7020 machine can replace at least 10 laborers. That's a bold statement. It certainly brings up some questions about the future of work, particularly in manufacturing. We're seeing more examples of machines taking over tasks that used to be done by humans. Yeah, it's a double-edged sword, isn't it? Yeah. On the one hand, you've got increased productivity and potentially lower costs for companies. But on the other hand, what happens to those workers? It's a complex issue. There are definite potential benefits in terms of efficiency and output, but we can't ignore the social and economic impact. Right. Moving on. Let's talk speed and maintenance. They're boasting about how fast this machine is and how low the maintenance costs are. They even mention a monthly budget for spare parts of just $500. Compared to manual labor or older machinery, $500 a month is incredibly low. Keeping those production lines running smoothly is key. Minimizing downtime is a huge plus. They give the specific example of using the S7020T model for inserting terminal components onto PCBs. And it looks like it can handle various component packages, both real and bowl. Uh, yeah, they mention two types of feeders. Real feeders for components on reels and bowl feeders for loose components. It's all about getting those components to the insertion head precisely and efficiently. Let's get a little technical here. The brochure highlights features like visual programming capabilities and a clinching system with error detection and correction. Those are hallmarks of modern automation. Visual programming lets you program the machine using a graphical interface, way more user-friendly than traditional coding, and the clinching system. Make sure those components are securely fastened to the PCB. Okay, break it down for me. What exactly is clinching? It's how they secure components, especially those with through-hole leads like terminals. They deform the leads to create a mechanical connection. And the clinching system on the S7020, it's smart enough to detect and fix errors during the process. So it's like having a built-in quality control expert right there in the machine. Pretty cool. And what about these insertion heads with nozzles, cutters, and pedestals? Sounds serious. Each insertion head, it's like a miniature factory packed with the tools needed to handle and insert components with incredible precision. Nozzles pick up and place the components. Cutters trim the leads if needed. And pedestals provide stability during insertion. Wow. It's not just about inserting components, but making sure they're placed perfectly every time. That level of precision is mind-blowing. It shows how far robotics and automation have come. These machines can do delicate tasks with an accuracy that would be tough for humans to match consistently. No, they're not limiting this machine to just one industry. They're talking about home appliances, automotive, power, digital watches, and electronics components. It seems designed to be versatile for a wide range of manufacturing needs. They're aiming for a broad market. And they've included YouTube links to show off the machine in action at a smart EMS factory. Smart move. Definitely. Seeing is believing, right? It gives potential buyers a better sense of the machine's size, speed, and how it all works. It's like a virtual factory tour, mm -hmm. which is way more engaging than just reading about it. Right. It adds a layer of transparency and makes their claims feel more credible. Okay. So we've covered cost-effectiveness, ease of use, versatility, the potential impact on labor, and some impressive technical capabilities. This machine seems like a powerhouse in the electronics manufacturing world. It's definitely pushing the boundaries of what's possible in automated assembly, but it also brings up big questions about the future of manufacturing and the role of human workers. Right. We can't ignore those questions. The S7020 seems like a glimpse into the future of factories where machines are doing more of the heavy lifting, literally and figuratively. It really makes you wonder, what will happen to the human workforce 
As this trend continues, will we adapt and find new roles? Or are we facing a future with fewer jobs for humans? Those are some heavy questions. Mm -hmm. And I think the answers are going to depend on how we navigate this technological shift. Absolutely. It's not just about the technology itself, but how we choose to use it and what kind of support we put in place to help workers during this transition. Let's take a step back from the big picture and get back to the S7020 itself. I'm really curious about that clinching system. You mentioned it can detect and correct errors, but how does that actually work? Picture this. The machine's insertion head carefully positions the terminal component over the right spot on the PCB. Then the clinching mechanism kicks in, deforming those leads to create a solid connection. Okay, I'm with you so far. But what if something goes wrong? What if the component isn't lined up? Or if there's not enough force? That's where the error detection and correction system comes in. They've got sensors in the clinching mechanism that are constantly monitoring the process, looking for anything that deviates from the settings. So it's like having a built-in quality control inspector. Exactly. If there's an error, the machine will try to fix it automatically, or it'll stop and alert the operator. This kind of monitoring is crucial for ensuring the finished product is reliable and consistent. And I'm guessing that helps cut down on wasted materials, which can save companies a lot of money. You got it. Finding errors early in the process saves time and resources in the long run. I'm starting to realize just how sophisticated this machine really is. It's not just a simple pick-and-place robot. It's a complex system with multiple layers of control and monitoring. It's a great example of how advanced engineering and automation technology can come together. No, let's talk about those different models in the S7020 series. You mentioned there are versions for terminals, eyelets, pins, and even those odd-shaped components. Why have so many specialized models? It all comes down to efficiency and precision. Each type of component has its quirks and requires specific handling by designing machines for each type. Manufacturers can optimize the insertion process, making it as fast and accurate as possible. So it's not a one-size-fits-all approach. It's about choosing the right machine for the component. Exactly. Think about it. You wouldn't use a hammer to drive in a screw, would you? Yeah, well, I have tried. And let's just say it didn't end well. So using the right machine for the job makes sense. I'm really impressed by the range of components these machines can handle, even those odd-shaped ones. That speaks to the system's versatility. The ability to handle odd-shaped components opens up a whole new world for manufacturers, allowing them to automate assembly for products that were previously a real challenge yeah. to handle with traditional machines. And that's where those different feeders come in, right? You talked about real feeders and bowl feeders. Can you explain how those work? They're like automated delivery systems for the components. Real feeders are commonly used for components that are packaged on reels, like resistors or capacitors. The reel unwinds, feeding the components one by one into a track. That leads to the insertion head. So it's like a conveyor belt for those tiny electronic parts. Exactly. Then you've got bowl feeders, which are used for components that are loose. Imagine a bowl that vibrates, gently shaking the components around until they line up and feed into a track. That takes them to the insertion head. Kind of like a sorting machine for tiny parts. You got it. Choosing the right feeder depends on the component and how it's packaged. The key is to make sure those components are delivered consistently and reliably. And speaking of the insertion head, we talked about it having nozzles, cutters, and pedestals. What do each of those parts do? The nozzle is the hand of the insertion head. It's a super precise component that grips and manipulates the component. With amazing accuracy, it picks up the component from the feeder, positions it over the hole on the PCB, and then releases it for insertion. Okay, so the nozzle is all about precision handling. What about those cutters? Are they for trimming the leads of the components? That's right. Sometimes the leads need to be trimmed to a specific length before or after they're inserted. The cutters on the insertion head can do this automatically, ensuring that all the components have the right lead length for proper connection and function. And what are those pedestals for? They provide support and stability during the insertion process. They help make sure the component is inserted at the right angle and depth, preventing damage to the component or the PCB. Think of them as tiny workbenches that hold the component steady. So it's all about creating a stable and controlled environment. For the insertion process, every detail matters when you're dealing with such small and fragile components. Absolutely. Precision is paramount in electronics manufacturing. Even the tiniest misalignment or error can significantly impact the performance and reliability of the final product. It seems like the S7020 series mm -hmm. is designed with that in mind, from error detection and correction to specialized feeders mm. and these precision-engineered insertion heads. These machines are all about consistent quality and reliability. They represent a major leap forward in automated assembly technology, and it's going to be fascinating to see how this technology continues to evolve and shape the future of manufacturing. I agree. But before we get carried away predicting the future, let's take a closer look at the technical specs of the S7020 series. The brochure mentions some interesting details about the machine size, speed, and programming capabilities. Let's dive into the nuts and bolts of what makes this machine tick. All right, let's start with size. The brochure says the S7020T model is 1,700 millimeters by 1,300 millimeters by 1,600 millimeters. That's roughly 5.5 feet wide, 4.2 feet deep, and 5.2 feet tall. Not exactly a compact desktop device. Definitely a substantial piece of equipment, but that's to be expected. 
given its capabilities and the complex tasks it can handle. And speaking of capabilities, the brochure mentions a maximum speed of 12,000 CPH for the S7020T model. That's pretty impressive. CPH stands for components per hour, so this machine can potentially insert up to 12,000 components per hour. That's a huge boost in productivity compared to manual insertion methods. For sure. It highlights the potential cost savings you get with automation. Not only can these machines work faster than humans, they can also work for much longer periods, without breaks or getting tired. Exactly. Machines don't need coffee breaks or vacations. They can work continuously, even 2047 if needed. That can significantly reduce production time and increase overall output. Let's talk about programming. The brochure mentions online visual programming and visual correction capabilities. What does that mean? It means that the machine can be programmed and adjusted using a graphical interface, much easier than using traditional text-based code. This makes programming more intuitive, even for operators who aren't familiar with complex programming languages. So it's kind of like using a drag and drop interface yeah. to create a flowchart. You can visually map out the machine's movements and actions. That's a good way to think about it. And the visual correction feature lets operators fine tune the machine's positioning and actions in real time, ensuring that components are inserted with pinpoint accuracy. It's all about making the machine user-friendly and adaptable to different production needs. Absolutely. The goal is to empower operators to control and adjust the machine confidently, even without deep technical expertise. The brochure also says the machine can handle PCB sizes up to 380 millimeter by 280 millimeter, roughly 15 inches by 11 inches. That's a pretty large area for component placement. Yes. It shows that the machine can work with a wide range of PCB sizes, from the small boards used in consumer electronics to the larger boards used in industrial applications. This versatility is a major plus for manufacturers who need to produce a variety of products with different PCB designs. I'm really starting to appreciate all the technical thought and engineering that went into designing this machine. The S7020 series really does represent the cutting edge of automated assembly technology. This deep dive has been an eye-opener, from the economic implications of automation to all the intricate details of component insertion. It gives us a glimpse into the future of manufacturing and the potential for humans and machines to work together in new and innovative ways. Speaking of the future, the brochure ends with a thought-provoking idea that the S7020 is a tireless worker that only needs regular maintenance. That statement says a lot about how automation could impact the workforce. Machines don't get tired, don't need breaks, and don't ask for raises. They represent a reliable and predictable source of labor, which can be both exciting and a little unsettling. It's a double-edged sword, for sure. Mm. On the one hand, automation can make things more efficient, lower costs, and improve product quality. But on the other hand, it raises concerns about job security and the need for workers to learn new skills to adapt. It's a complex issue with no simple solutions. We'll need to figure out as a society how to manage this transition as automation keeps changing the world of work. Before we go too deep into those philosophical questions, let's talk about how they're marketing this S7020 series. What stood out to you about their strategy? What immediately impressed me was the level of detail and technical information they've packed into this brochure. They're not afraid to get technical, which makes sense since they're targeting engineers and manufacturing professionals. They're definitely appealing to an audience that cares about precision, efficiency, and reliability. Exactly, and they're not just talking about the tech. They're also doing a great job of highlighting the economic benefits. They're emphasizing cost effectiveness, low maintenance costs, and how this machine could replace labor which are all key factors for manufacturers looking to improve their bottom line. They're speaking the language of business. And those YouTube videos showing the machine in a real factory setting mm. are a smart move. It's so much more engaging than just reading about it. Potential buyers can see the machine's size, speed, and get a feel for how it would fit into their production lines. It's like offering a virtual factory tour. Exactly. Plus, it has transparency and makes what they're saying more believable. They're also using social media, like Facebook and LinkedIn to connect with potential buyers and share updates about the S7020 series. That's a smart strategy. Social media is a powerful tool for building brand awareness, engaging with potential customers, and generating leads. It shows that they're embracing modern marketing and communication trends. And it looks like they're encouraging people to reach out for more information and even visit their factory in Shenzhen, China. That's a great way to build personal relationships with potential customers and give them a first-hand look at their operation. It demonstrates a commitment to customer service and building trust. It seems like they've put together a really comprehensive and well-thought-out marketing strategy. They're targeting the right audience, highlighting the key benefits, and using a variety of channels to reach potential buyers. I agree. They're positioning the S7020 series as a game changer in automated assembly, and they're doing a great job of getting that message out there. We've covered a lot of ground, from the inner workings of the S7020 machine itself to the broader implications of automation, on the manufacturing industry, it's been an insightful deep dive. It's given us a glimpse into the future of manufacturing, where machines and humans might work together in new and exciting ways. Let's distill all of this information into a few key takeaways for our listener. First and foremost, the S7020 series represents a significant leap forward in automated assembly technology. These machines are all about precision, efficiency, and reliability. They can insert thousands of components every hour with minimal human intervention. They're a prime example of how automation is changing the face of manufacturing. 
boosting productivity, lowering costs, and leading to higher quality products. But while these advancements offer significant benefits, we also need to think about the future of work and the role of human workers in a world that's becoming increasingly automated. You're right. It's important to consider how we implement automation technology, making sure it benefits society as a whole and doesn't lead to widespread job displacement without providing retraining and support for workers. Finally, I think it's important to remember that the S7020 series is more than just a machine. It's a symbol of innovation, human ingenuity, and our constant pursuit of progress in manufacturing. It's a glimpse into a future where machines and humans will work side by side, pushing the limits of what's possible in the world of manufacturing. And on that note, let's leave our listener with a final thought-provoking question. Given the S7020's capabilities and potential impact, what do you think the future holds for human workers in the electronics manufacturing industry? Are we all about to be replaced by robots? That's the big question, isn't it? Automation is definitely here to stay, and it will only become more sophisticated. But I wouldn't say humans are becoming obsolete just yet. Okay, good. I was starting to get a little nervous there. Think about it this way. Machines excel at repetitive tasks, following instructions, and working quickly and accurately. But they don't have the creativity problem-solving skills, or adaptability that humans bring to the table. That's a good point. We humans are still much better at thinking outside the box, coming up with new ideas, mm -hmm. and handling unexpected situations. Exactly. Consider this. Who's going to design the next generation of these machines? Who's going to program them to do new things and fix them when they break? It's going to be humans. So it's not about humans versus machines, but about finding ways for them to work together, each doing what they do best. Precisely. And that's where things get really interesting. Imagine a factory where robots take care of all the repetitive tasks the physically demanding tasks, freeing up human workers to focus on the more complex and creative aspects of manufacturing. So humans would be more like supervisors, making sure everything is running smoothly, stepping in to solve any problems that the machines can't handle on their own. Exactly. They might also be involved in designing new products, developing new processes, and finding ways to make the production line even more efficient. That sounds like a pretty cool vision of the future, where humans and machines work together in harmony, each contributing their unique skills to create a more productive manufacturing environment. And it's a future that's closer than you might think. We're already seeing these kinds of collaborative environments starting to pop up in factories around the world. Which brings up a crucial point, education and training. If we want humans to thrive in this new age of automation, we need to make sure they have the skills to keep up with these advancements. Absolutely. We need to invest in programs that teach people how to work alongside robots, program them, maintain them, and think critically about the role of automation in the workplace. It's not just about teaching technical skills. It's about developing adaptability, problem solving, and critical thinking skills. That will be essential in a world where technology is constantly changing. Well said. The future belongs to those who are eager to learn, adapt, and embrace change. It's about seeing automation not as a threat, but as an opportunity to do more interesting work yeah. and create a more fulfilling work experience. And you know, this shift towards automation isn't limited to manufacturing. It's happening across all industries. That's true. From healthcare and transportation to finance and beyond, automation is changing the way we work and live. Which means those skills we were just talking about, adaptability, problem solving, critical thinking, will be even more valuable in the years to come, no matter what your profession is. So the message is clear. Embrace lifelong learning. Stay curious and be open to new possibilities. The future is full of opportunity for those who are ready for it. Couldn't agree more. Now to bring this back to the S7020 series, I think it's worth noting that those YouTube videos they've included do a fantastic job of showcasing this technology in a real factory setting. Absolutely. Seeing it in action really brings the whole thing to life. You can see how the different models handle various components, how the feeders work, and even how the clinching system ensures everything is securely attached. It's like getting a behind-the-scenes tour of the future of electronics manufacturing. Exactly. And they've also included a 3D model of the machine, which is a great way to explore the different components and get a sense of its size and complexity. It's clear that they're really trying to make this technology accessible and understandable for potential buyers. They're not just selling a machine. They're selling a vision of the future of manufacturing. And it's a future that's worth exploring. So for our listeners who want to learn more and see the S7020 in action, be sure to check out those links in the show notes. It's a great starting point for anyone interested in understanding how automation is changing the way we make things. All right, so we've talked about the machine, the technology, the impact on labor, and even the marketing strategy. But let's not forget about the heart of this discussion, the components themselves. You're right. It's easy to get caught up in the excitement of automation. And forget that this whole process is about assembling electronic components onto those PCBs. And there's a whole world of components out there, each with its own unique purpose and properties. From resistors and capacitors to transistors and integrated circuits, each component plays a crucial role in the functionality of the final product. It's like a symphony of tiny parts, all working together to create something amazing. And the S7020 series is the conductor, orchestrating the placement of these components with precision and speed. It's fascinating to think about the journey these components take from their initial design and manufacture to their final placement on the PCB. It's a testament to human ingenuity 
and our ability to create incredibly complex and sophisticated devices from the smallest building blocks. Speaking of building blocks, let's dive a little deeper into some of the components that the S7020 theories can handle. We talked about terminals, eyelets, pins, and even those odd-shaped components. But what are they actually used for? Well, terminals, for example, are commonly used to create electrical connections between different parts of a circuit board. They're like tiny little docking stations for wires and other components. So they're essential for making sure everything is wired up correctly. Exactly. And eyelets are similar to terminals, but they're typically used in applications where a stronger and more durable connection is needed. Like in high vibration environments. Yeah. Or applications where there's a lot of stress on the connections. Exactly. And then you have pins, which are often used as connectors or to provide mechanical support for components on the PCB. It's amazing how such small components can play such critical roles. And the S7020 series can handle a wide variety of pin types, from standard straight pins to vent pins, and even those tiny surface mount pins that are becoming increasingly common in modern electronics. That's a testament to the machine's versatility and ability to adapt to the ever-evolving world of electronics manufacturing. And let's not forget about those odd-shaped components. Those can be anything from custom design connectors to sensors and actuators that have unique shapes and sizes. The ability to handle those odd-shaped components opens up a whole new world of possibilities for manufacturers, allowing them to automate the assembly of even the most intricate and complex devices. And the S7E20F model, which is specifically designed for those odd-shaped components, is a real game changer in that regard. It's fascinating to think about all the different industries and applications that benefit from this technology. From consumer electronics like smartphones and laptops to industrial equipment and automotive systems, the S7020 series is helping to drive innovation and efficiency across a wide range of sectors. And it's not just about the components themselves, it's also about the materials they're made from. You're right. The S7020 can handle components made from a variety of materials, including metals, plastics, and ceramics. Each material has its own unique properties that make it suitable for different applications. For example, metal components are often used for their conductivity and durability while plastic components are valued for their lightweight and insulation properties. And ceramics are often used in high temperature applications because of their excellent heat resistance. The ability to handle components made from a variety of materials further adds to the S7020's versatility and makes it a truly valuable asset for manufacturers across a wide range of industries. And as technology continues to evolve, we can expect to see even more innovative materials and components being used in electronic devices. Absolutely, the world of electronics is constantly pushing the boundaries of what's possible. And the S7020 series is designed to keep pace with those advancements. It's exciting to think about what the future holds for this technology and the impact it will continue to have on the way we make things. But before we get too carried away with future predictions, let's take a step back and talk about some of the challenges that come with automated assembly. You're right. While automation offers many benefits, it also presents some unique challenges that manufacturers need to be aware of. For example, one of the biggest challenges is ensuring the quality and consistency of the final product. That's right. Even with sophisticated error detection and correction systems in place, there's always the possibility of defects or inconsistencies occurring during the assembly process. So manufacturers need to implement rigorous quality control measures to ensure that every product meets the required standards. Absolutely. This includes inspecting components before they're loaded into the machine, monitoring the assembly process closely, and conducting thorough testing of the final product. Another challenge is dealing with the complexity of modern electronic devices. You're right. As devices become more sophisticated and packed with features, the number of components and the intricacy of the assembly process increase significantly. This requires machines that are capable of handling a wide range of com component types and sizes with extreme precision. And the S7020 series is certainly up to that task. But even with advanced machines, mm. the complexity of modern electronics can still present challenges in terms of programming, setup, and troubleshooting. Absolutely. Manufacturers need skilled technicians who understand the intricacies of the machine and the devices they're assembling. Another challenge that often gets overlooked is the need for flexibility and adaptability in the manufacturing process. You're right. In today's fast-paced market, manufacturers need to be able to respond quickly to changing customer demands and new product designs. This requires machines that can be easily reprogrammed and reconfigured to handle different products and production volumes. And the S7020 series, with its modular design and user-friendly programming interface, offers a high degree of flexibility. So while automation brings many benefits, it's important to remember that it's not a silver bullet solution. Exactly. Manufacturers need to carefully consider the challenges and implement the right processes and systems to ensure successful implementation. Now, let's shift gears a bit and talk about the environmental impact of automated assembly. That's an important aspect that often gets overlooked in discussions about technology and manufacturing. The electronics industry in general mm -hmm. has a significant environmental footprint from the mining of raw materials to the disposal of electronic waste. You're right. And while automation can contribute to reducing waste and improving energy efficiency in some areas, it also has the potential to increase energy consumption and generate more electronic waste, if not managed carefully. So manufacturers need to be mindful mm -hmm. 
of the environmental impact of their operations. Mm -hmm and implement sustainable practices throughout the entire product life cycle. Absolutely. This includes using energy efficient equipment, minimizing waste, and designing products that are easy to repair and recycle. The S7020 series, with its focus on efficiency and precision, can certainly contribute to reducing waste and energy consumption in the assembly process. But it's important for manufacturers to look beyond the immediate benefits of automation and consider the long-term environmental impact of their choices. The sustainability is a shared responsibility, and it requires collaboration across the entire supply chain from component manufacturers to end users. And as consumers, we can also play a role by choosing products from companies that prioritize sustainability and by properly recycling our old electronics. It's about making conscious choices that benefit both the environment and future generations. And you know, speaking of the future, I think it's worth taking a moment to reflect on how far we've come in terms of electronics manufacturing. Amazing to think about how much has changed in just a few decades. From the early days of hand soldering components onto circuit boards to the sophisticated automated assembly lines we see today, the progress has been remarkable. And the S7020 series is a testament to that progress, showcasing the incredible capabilities of modern automation technology. But as we look to the future, it's important to remember that technology is only a tool. It's up to us as humans to decide how we use that tool to shape the world around us. And that's a powerful thought, isn't it? We have the ability to harness technology to create a better future, one that is more efficient, sustainable, and equitable for all. Absolutely. And that's a future worth striving for. Now, speaking of the future, let's delve into some of the emerging trends that are likely to shape the world of electronics manufacturing. In the years to come, one of the most significant trends is the increasing miniaturization of electronic components. That's right. As devices become smaller and more portable, the components that power them need to shrink as well. This trend presents both opportunities and challenges for manufacturers. On the one hand, it allows for the creation of even more compact and powerful devices. But on the other hand, it requires machines that are capable of handling incredibly small and delicate components with even greater precision. And the S7020 series, with its advanced vision system and precision robotics, is well equipped to handle the challenges of component miniaturization. Another significant trend is the growing demand for flexible and wearable electronics. You're right. From smartwatches and fitness trackers to flexible displays and electronic textiles, we're seeing a growing demand for devices mm. that can conform to the human body or integrate seamlessly into our clothing. This trend requires new materials and manufacturing processes that can create flexible and durable circuits. And the S7020 series can be adapted to handle flexible substrates, making it a valuable tool for manufacturers looking to explore this emerging market. Another exciting trend is the rise of the Internet of Things, IoT, where everyday objects are connected to the Internet and able to collect and share data. This trend is driving the demand for even more sensors, actuators, and other components that enable devices to interact with the physical world. And the S7020 series, with its ability to handle a wide range of component types and sizes, can play a key role in the manufacturing of IoT devices. The electronics industry is constantly evolving, and the S7020 series is designed to be adaptable and future-proof. It's a testament to human ingenuity and our ability to create machines that can not only keep pace with, but also help to drive innovation in the world of electronics. And as we wrap up this deep dive into the S7020 series and the broader world of automated manufacturing, I think it's important to come back to the human element of all of this. You're right. While we've talked a lot about technology and automation, it's important to remember that behind every machine, behind every piece of code, are human minds and hands. It's the engineers, the designers, the technicians, the operators, yeah. and countless others who bring these machines to life and make the magic of electronics manufacturing happen. And as we continue to push the boundaries of what's possible with technology, it's essential that we remember the human side of the equation. We need to ensure that automation benefits all of humanity, not just a select few. And that's a conversation that needs to continue, not just in the context of electronics manufacturing, but across all industries and aspects of our lives. It's about finding the right balance right. between technology and humanity, between innovation and ethics, between progress and sustainability. And that's where you, our listener, come in. We've explored the S7020's potential and how it fits into this bigger picture of automation. But what do you think about all this? How do you see these advancements impacting your own work, your industry, even your daily life? It's a question worth pondering. These changes aren't just happening in factories. They're rippling out into every corner of our lives. That's what makes it so fascinating, right? It's not just about nuts and bolts. It's about how technology is changing the way we live the way we work, mm. and the way we interact with the world. Exactly. And for anyone listening who's feeling overwhelmed, I think it's important to remember, change is a constant. Yeah. Throughout history, we've adapted to new technologies. You're right. Think about the printing press, the automobile, the computer. All of these inventions disrupted things and led to profound changes in society. And yet we adapted, innovated, and thrived. And this current wave of automation is no different. It presents challenges, for sure, but also incredible opportunities. Exactly. And one of the most important things we can do is embrace lifelong learning. The skills that are in demand today might be completely different tomorrow. So we need to be adaptable and willing to learn new things throughout our lives. Well said. It's about cultivating a growth mindset, being curious, 
and staying open to new possibilities. And, you know, the S720 series is a great example of how technology can augment human capabilities, not replace them. Absolutely. Instead of fearing automation, we should think about how we can use it to our advantage to make our work more efficient, more fulfilling, and more impactful. It's about working smarter, not harder. And it's about finding ways to leverage technology, mm. to solve problems, create new things, mm. and make the world a better place. And that brings us back to something we touched on earlier, the ethical considerations in the development and deployment of technology. That's a crucial point. As we create these increasingly powerful machines, we need to think carefully about the consequences and ensure that technology is used responsibly and ethically. It's not enough to simply focus on what's technically possible. We also need to consider the social, economic, and environmental impacts of our choices. It's about making sure that technology serves humanity, not the other way around. Exactly. And that requires ongoing dialogue, thoughtful regulation, and a commitment to putting people first. It's a complex challenge, but one that we need to face head on if we want to create a future where technology benefits all of humanity. And that's why conversations like this are so important. We need to keep talking, keep learning, and keep questioning as we navigate this rapidly evolving technological landscape. And for anyone listening who's interested in delving deeper into this topic, we've included some links in the show notes to articles, videos, and other resources that explore automation and its impact on the workforce and the ethical considerations we've been discussing. We encourage you to explore these resources, share your own thoughts and insights, and join the conversation about shaping the future of work and technology. So as we wrap up this deep dive into the S7020 series and the broader world of automated manufacturing, we want to leave you with a final thought to ponder. The future is not something that simply happens to us. It's something we create through our choices, our actions, and our collective vision. So what kind of future do you want to build? What role do you see technology playing? Right. And how can you contribute to shaping that future in a positive and meaningful way? These are questions worth reflecting on, discussing with others, and ultimately acting upon. We believe that technology, when harnessed wisely and ethically, has the potential to create a more just, equitable, and sustainable world. And we hope that this deep dive has given you some food for thought and inspired you to think critically, creatively, and hopefully with a sense of optimism about the future. Thank you for joining us on this journey of discovery. Keep exploring, keep learning, and keep diving deep into the world of knowledge. Until next time, stay curious.